Hi guys, let's go to Rome in Italy. First up, I'm gonna take you to St. Paul Cathedral. It is to be the most largest basilica until the construction of St. Peter's Basilica. When it was reconstructed from fire, the entrance was then built with 150 columns. This church is so beautiful and the first time I saw this I really thought it was magnificent from the marble steps to marble and intricate Corinthian columns to gold ceilings everything about this church is undeniably spectacular. In this cathedral, you can find here the tomb of St. Paul under the main altar. Some people know this basilica as St. Paul outside the walls because it is indeed located outside the old city walls, which is also five miles away from the Vatican City. Okay, our next stop is the Roman Colosseum. The official name for this is not actually Roman Colosseum, but is Flavian Amphitheater. Why or how did it become Roman Colosseum? I have no idea, I'm sorry, but it was the largest Roman amphitheater and made of stones and concrete. Okay, how did this building get destroyed? Well, the decline started when people had a change in taste of their entertainment, then physical damage in the Colosseum from lightning, Earthquakes and other natural disasters destroyed two-thirds of the original Colosseum, including the arena's marble seats and other decorative elements. Remember the movie Gladiator with Russell Crowe? There, apparently it's my husband's one of the greatest movies of all time. Inside the Coliseum, it could seat more than 50,000 spectators. From the old days, this is where you witness the gladiatorial combats, wild animal fights, and gladiators were mostly slaves, prisoners of war, or criminals. Are you not 
entertained? Are you not entertained? Okay, that's enough. Let's now go to Plaza de la Rotonda. Okay, here in Plaza de la Rotonda, you will find the Pantheon and the Fountain of the Pantheon. Okay, don't get this wrong with the Parthenon that's in Athens. Okay, as per this destination, we just took a bunch of pictures from the outside because a lot of people were trying to go in because the admission is free. It is a Roman temple dedicated to Roman gods and here you'll find the tomb of the famous artist Raphael. Inside, you'll see a dome, and it's supposedly the world's largest and reinforced concrete dome in the history of the architecture. The inscription at the top means Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, having been consul, three times made it. Okay, no trip to Rome is complete without visiting the Fontana di Trevi or Trevi Fountain. It is one of the most stunning fountains in the world. Interesting fact is that there is roughly 3,000 euros being thrown into the fountain and at the end of the day it gets collected and given to Italian charity called Caritas and the money is used for supermarket programs for Rome's needy to help them get groceries. But stealing coins from this fountain is highly illegal. Okay, let's talk about the carvings on this fountain for a little bit. In the middle statue is called the Ocean. He has long and abundant beard, which is the symbol of wisdom and power, and his look is majestic and gentle at the same time. On his right hand, he's holding a wand in the act of command, and his left hand holds the cloth to cover his nudity. He is carried by two horses, jacked by two tritons, the horse on the left is restless that represents the violent strength of the sea, while the other is calm that represents the tranquility of the sea. One triton is young and the other triton is the opposite and holds a twisted shell to announce their passage. On Ocean's right is called the Abundance holding the Horn of Plenty. The Horn of Plenty is the symbol of abundance of fruits and above her is Agrippa, the one who constructed the aqueduct commanding his generals to build it. On his left is called the Health holding a cup a snake drinks from. Above her is Relief showing Virgin Lady indicating the soldiers the source of water. Legend has it that if you throw a coin on your left shoulder, then you will go back to Rome someday. So make sure you make a wish and throw that coin with your right hand to your left shoulder. At the corner, there is an 18th century icon of the Virgin Mary and below is a street lamp. They place Virgin Mary above the street lamps to deter thieves or wrongdoers to put off the light and commit crimes. In Rome, we also pass by the Spanish Steps. The Spanish Steps is very popular among the tourists and the steps have 138 steps and it connects the Piazza di Spagna at the base and Piazza Trinita de Monte at the top where the Trinita de Monte church is also located. At the base is the fountain of the old boat sprouting water as it sinks. 
interesting story about this is that before the city walls were built, the city would always be flooded. Piazza di Spagna was badly flooded and when the water had finally subsided, a boat was left behind the square. Our last stop is the Vatican City. The Vatican City is the smallest country in the world. Smallest country in the world. It is an independent city state. It is governed um, as an absolute monarchy with the Pope at its head. They mint their own euros, print their own stamps, issues passports, and etc. Um, they don't have taxation, but they generate the Vatican's revenue by the museum admission fees, stamp, and souvenir sales. We go to St. Peter's Basilica, um, and it is the largest interior throughout all the Christian churches and is home to the burial site of St. Peter and other popes. You'll find high dome ceilings, late Renaissance architecture, and the looming altar. You can also find here Michelangelo's Pieta. <music> Thank you guys for watching, um, read the details below to get some tips so you can plan your visit accordingly.